add us. Add us to your favorites. Add us to your favorites. Add us to your favorites. Are we on the air? Yes, you are. morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be around this wild, wacky, and sometimes disturbing world of ours. Yes, that's the intro to the Mindset Podcast, a weekly attempt to open eyes and shedding light on what's really going on in the world, all done by ripping apart the media madness that masquerades as news. Join me, Gareth Davis, every Sunday on the Mindset Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting services such as iTunes, Stitcher, and so on. Or you can go directly to the main Mindset website. That's www.mindsetcentral.com. Check out the Mindset Podcast. Bring your curiosity, your opinions, and a sense of humor. And remember that some worldviews are stranger than others. Welcome to the Dead America Podcast. It's time to learn something new right now. Let's listen in with your host, Ed Waters, as he learns new things and meets new people. If you're a podcaster or a business entrepreneur, you want to pay attention. We have with us Ryan Estes. He is the co-founder of Titcaster Podcast Booking Agency. Ryan, could you introduce yourself and let people know just a little bit about you, please? I'd love to, Ed, and I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, like you said, I am the co-founder of Kitcaster. Uh, we book entrepreneurs on top podcasts. Um, we, we are very deep into podcasting. We love podcasters. Um, And, you know, our mission is to celebrate good conversation and wherever that takes us, we're ready to go. So, you know, I'm excited for this conversation and um, being on your show. Thanks, Ed. Well, I sure do thank you for being with us today, Ryan. It is a pleasure. Now, before we get into this, why don't we go ahead and recognize your partner in the business of Kitcaster? Could you tell us just a little bit about who they are? Absolutely. Our co-founder... Her name is Brandy Whalen, and Brandy and I met probably five or six years ago. She had a PR agency. I had a digital marketing agency. I also had a, a founder's podcast called Talk Launch, and she would book some of her clients, her startup clients on my podcast, and we just always kind of clicked. You know, it was a couple of years ago. Um, I was coming on the heels of kind of a failed project. I was working on a um, crowdfunding platform um, for service workers. So basically, if you were a barber or you're a house painter and you wanted to pre-sell your services, you could do it on that platform. It was called Career Funded. And, you know, I, I had that going about 18 months and just didn't find the traction I, I needed for it to, to really hit. So I was considering kind of throwing in the towel. Um, ironically enough, I think that product would have been a massive success due to COVID. But <laughs> nonetheless, um, was talking to Brandy and Brandy was like, let's do some, let's do some in podcasting. So we kind of set forth uh, what would become Kitcaster with a pilot program, um, had some fun doing it, had some success doing it. So we wrapped the brand around it um, and, and took off, you know, that was probably, we officially launched September of 2019 and have seen just kind of rapid expansive growth since then. Kitcaster now has 14 employees. We're going to hire an, another gal next week. And, you know, we're feeling really bullish on podcasting and, and kind of what it can bring to the world. That's very impressive, Brian. So what is it like for you helping so many people growing their podcasting? Oh, I love it. <laughs> you know, like I said, I, I've been podcasting myself for 10 years. You know, and it, it, I originally started as kind of a, a cure for the blues. You know, I had a little bit of depression. I was coming out of a career in music and because I had two small young children, you know, this is 10 years ago and, and thought I missed the music. Turns out 
I just missed my bandmates, you know, and I kind of discovered that through podcasting by getting my old band buddies back together and, and doing podcasts and fell in love with the medium, you know, kind of did a spin with the new the Talk Launch podcast to introduce podcasting into my professional life. Uh, and saw just like a massive opportunity, but also like real revenue. You know, I, I can probably attribute, you know, before Kitcaster, maybe eight, 800 grand in revenue as a direct tie to podcasting. You know, so podcasting that started as a, as a hobby, as a fun thing to do for entertainment, um, became pretty central in, in my life. So not only professionally, personally, you know, and just opportunity for growth. You know, I, I, I love meeting people for the first time. I, I love conversation and, and talking. There seems to be something magical that happens when you're talking to somebody and you hit record. You know, it, it ups to Annie a little bit. You get a little bit of those butterflies. And, and I feel like you can make a considerable kind of movement in the conversation. So it's been great for me personally, professionally, my family. So to be able to spread that out is really, really satisfying and fulfilling, you know, because ultimately the, the folks that we end up kind of engaged with, you know, kind of our, our clients are have that in common with me. You know, they're, they're talkers. And most of the folks we work with are just really passionate about their business and what they're working on. And more times than not, they've probably burned out all the people in their life with stories about their projects and dreams and <laughs> everything else. So they're at this kind of crossroads where they need to find someone who's curious about what they do. And what's great about podcasting, in particular people that are listening to podcasts as a resource, is you find that, you know, people are using podcasts as ways to for personal and professional advancement or inspiration or, you know, maybe dare stories or, you know, whatever they're needing it for. You have that whole kind of universe there. So to be able to spread that to other people and seeing you know, people's eyes kind of light up when they've recorded 40 podcasts and they can't wait for 40 more. Um, it's really rewarding. I, I, I love it. Yeah, you articulate that very well, the feeling that podcasters can really be exhumed with, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, it's life-saving it, for many of us. We yeah. We long for something different. So what has been your most memorable moment in podcasting? Oh boy, that's a good question. Um, the, the first thing that came to mind were the the podcasts I was recording. I'd have a a guest on, and they'd give me one word answers. Those were always like kind of dicey. You, know, you ask them a question, they're like, "Yes." You're like, "Well, I only wrote four questions on this paper. This is going to be a weird podcast." So <laughs> I don't know why that that came to mind, but I think maybe it's just the the, the those panic situations where you, you figure, find yourself talking about Sasquatch or you know being a professional baseball player, who knows what. Um, but those were always interesting. Um, you know, I think uh, publishing my hundredth podcast was kind of a, a seminal moment. You know, for me to get going, you know, and this is probably true for a lot of podcasters is. You get started and you listen to it back and you're like, wow, I'm, this is terrible. You know, you have a lot, of, you could be very critical. At least I was real critical with what I was doing. And I told myself, you know, hey, Ryan, let's, 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 not, let's not fall into per, uh, paralysis by analysis. Let's just keep doing this. And we're not going to judge the podcast until the 100th episode. You know, so let's give ourselves 100 episodes so um, we can just experiment freely without being too critical. So, you know, when I published my my 100th episode, it was kind of a, a big moment. I was like, whoa, like I, I'm stepping forward into something new and now I can listen to it with new ears. And, you know, I was like, wow, I wonder how far I've come. And I went back and listened to the first episode. And I tell you what, the hundredth wasn't much better than the first one. So <laughs> I figured it was hopeless. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. As long as I'm having fun with it, we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. So I guess those two kind of things stick out a little bit. <laughs> that is very interesting. You know, a lot of people, they lose their enthusiasm for podcasting because they put expectations that really can't be met on themselves and their yeah. podcast. So growing a podcast, it takes time, it takes a lot of effort, and really it takes collaboration. 
So what is the best advice for people trying to leverage podcasting to grow a business or just a podcast? You know, I think podcasts for business or, or doing a podcast, um, maybe just for interview style podcast, I think is a great way to go. If you're doing, let's say for business and you want to I- increase kind of your opportunities through business, you're hosting a podcast. You know, I think maybe you, you sit down and you write out, hey, what are the real challenges I'm facing right now? What are the threats? You know, what are the weaknesses in my business? What, what are the chinks in my armor? You know, and make a list of those things and questions you might have for those. And then go find those people that can answer those questions and interview them. The thing about business is finding answers and solutions is usually really expensive. What's kind of beautiful about the reciprocity of podcasting is that you can find conversations. You can ask really important questions to people and get answers for free. You know, and if, if you kind of manage it right, you know, maybe you can build a relationship in there for a future resource. You know, so there, there's great opportunities in, in direct selling. There's great opportunities in marketing assets. There's sales opportunities from podcasting. But I, I think the big return um, from the host side would be going and trying to get some answers to, to things that you're really struggling with. You know, now it, as a person, if you're like, well, I don't want to start a podcast, but I want to use podcasts in, in your business. That's exactly what Kitcaster does. You know, as you know, Ed, like there's a lot of moving parts in making a podcast. <laughs> I mean, it is a, it, it, it's a substantial effort, you know, from software to hardware, to editing, to publishing, producing the show. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. So, you know, if you're you know looking to kind of leverage podcasts, uh, but you don't want to actually produce a show yourself going on, you know, what you might call podcast tour, which is a bunch of other folks podcasts is a great way to kind of kick the tires and see if you can use it in your business. So really that's the core of what, what Kitcaster does. So, you know, people come to us and want to go on other people's podcasts and we kind of help facilitate those conversations. So those are a couple of ways I think, you know, at least professionally that you can leverage podcasting for to be kind of a positive factor. Yeah, that's great advice just the struggles associated with podcasting like you mentioned it can be that moment where you just give up people like ryan and his crew can really help you get over those struggles and not even hit a road bump with it so i highly recommend what they do so what has been some of those struggles for you building kitcaster oh boy you know, Kitcaster, I've been um, kind of launching businesses and validating businesses for 10 years. It doesn't get any easier, but I, I think you can make the mistakes faster um, <laughs> and, learn, and learn how to move a little bit quicker. You know, so um, the, the, always the, the hardest thing to overcome is just product market fit and validation. You know, as an entrepreneur myself, I fall in love with some idea, you know. Um, I've, I've launched a, a cookie company. I've launched a, a cosmetics brand. I've launched that, that platform. I did a, a, a blanket that was also a pillow all over the place, you know, because I really enjoy, you know, kind of this process of inventing. Now, if you want to kind of take those things serious and bring them to market, what you have to do is find out if people will pay you money for them. So I think where my expertise really lies in is that validation phase is here's an idea. I think it's amazing. I need to find someone to give me some money for it. And if they don't, it doesn't matter how much I like it. I have to kill it because it's not going to work. So um, I think uh, those, that's the initial challenge um, of launching a new business, kind of chasing all these shiny objects. I kind of started whittling down to what was important to me, you know, from a project, you know, it had to, it had to be, it has to cover three bases. You know, it has to be of service. I want to feel like my life is important for somebody other than myself. You know, it's got to be fun because I'm just kind of lazy. And if it's not fun, I'm probably just not going to do it. And the other part is the validation phase. It has to make money. I've got kids and I don't have that much time. So, you know, if, if it's fun and it's of service, but it's not making me money, it's like I should just be playing guitar. You know, I can do that, and, and it serves me in that way too. 
So it has to make money. So, you know, the initial push for Kitcaster was like, okay, I love podcasting. I want to bring it to more people. I want to help people leverage it in their business. Will somebody uh, pay me money to do it? You know, um, I kind of had a half-baked idea of what it could be, picked up the phone one afternoon, called five of my clients, and three of them said they'd pay me to do it. So I took their money and, you know, built the pilot program for, for Kitcaster. I was able to find kind of validation from current existing clients, which was a good first step. However, not real accurate. These are people that trusted me and loved me. So they'd probably pay me to do anything for them. Um, so I wanted to find kind of people, kind of a cold call sale, uh, found a couple of those that same week. Um, so I knew I was on to something there. I knew there was kind of a need because there was a, a, a clear kind of product and a clear delivery. So, you know, we overcame the product market fit pretty early, you know, um, because being a podcast booking agency doesn't really exist. Kind of our next big challenge was creating an infrastructure and a, a methodology to deliver. And maybe even before deliver, how do you package this product in a way that someone can buy it, you know, because it's a service. And, you know, people only, people really only buy products. So we had to productize the uh, the service, um, figure out a, a methodology to deliver, find all the tools, kind of pull together the, the tech stack and the tools that could um, help us on our way. Um, once we kind of overcame that, all the challenges since then have been, you know, how to move as fast as we possibly can to scale on a service. You know, uh, the, the, the magic <laughs> um, business for most entrepreneurs, particularly startups and, and tech entrepreneurs, or you know, SaaS subscription services that scale infinitely with a small team. Because we are very hands-on, you know, we the way that we scale is through human capital, you know. So we got to put butts in seats in order for our business to to grow. So how do we? you know, get good people and train them well and get them fired up to, to, to work hard and, and move really quickly. Um, so those have been kind of the challenges to this point, you know, um, and not to, not to mention all the COVID challenges where, you know, the, the, our, the office where we were working, there was at one point, you know, 30 plus businesses here and they all were killed by COVID. And now there's, three businesses here. <laughs> you know, so, um, lots of challenges, but, but fortunately, um, you know, I think, I, I think we've been able to adapt um, as fast as we can and, and try and at least view those challenges soberly. One more quick question for podcasters and business owners that actually want to leverage podcasting. As podcasters, we all go through, like we talked earlier, what they – call imposter syndrome. What are some of the recommendations for you for podcasters and people that would like to leverage podcasting to get over that imposter syndrome feeling? Oh man, I wish somebody would tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I don't think it ever goes away. Maybe that's a good thing. You know, maybe it's, it's good to always be a, a little bit nervous, maybe feel like a, you're an imposter. Um, it, it's been helpful to me in the past to find somebody who's really successful in, in the lane that I'm kind of pursuing um, that I can clearly see is not as good as me. <laughs> huh. So, so if, I, if I could find somebody who's who's uh, who I feel like I'm better than is not the I you know I'm not better than anybody. But if I if I'm let's say I, I feel like my shoes are better than that guy's shoes you know it's like yeah bezos i mean he's got a hundred billion dollars but look at his sneakers i mean my <laughs> sneakers are better than those so if he can do it to that level with those sneakers on i think i'll be fine so <laughs> i mean i i think there is a, a, a the nice thing about imposter syndrome is everybody feels that way so you're not going to overcome it but you can just do it anyway you know there's a certain stoicism i think about you know being scared and just moving forward anyway you know it's, it's noble it's a it's a it's brave that right there actually stands out it actually can induce you to do more things which is good so let's exactly. dive into kitcaster a little bit 
sure. what's the process of onboarding for people? Absolutely. We, you know, we've got kind of two products. We've got the agency side, which is a real high touch um, white glove service, you know, where onboarding entails um, basically diving into our clients' ideal audiences. Now, our clients want to go on other people's podcasts. So ultimately, they want to be speaking to some, some people that are going to be listening to the show. Um, so we'll get those, uh, those audiences together. Often those are prospects for the business. It might be fundraising opportunities with uh, uh, venture capitalists or angel investors. It could be just the networking opportunities with podcast hosts, which are just natural networkers. It, a lot of times now we've seen um, a lot of people are using podcasts to try and recruit. You know, talking about their products, see if they can find some talent to come work for them. So we'll get those audiences together. The second step, we'll build media kits specifically for podcasting. Basically, how can we put our clients in the best light to position them for, you know, great podcast placements? Um, and then the third step is just kind of what we do every day. You know, we go out there, uh, we email, we make phone calls, handshakes with podcast hosts and book them on the show, you know, um, now, we kind of take it the extra step. We like to send thank you cards to podcast hosts. We like to send gifts to our, our clients. And with the kind of the idea that, you know, we want podcasting to be impactful. But, I mean, this should be fun. You know, like podcasting should not be a chore. It shouldn't be a, a labor. It shouldn't. It, this should be fun, you know. So we do the best we possibly can to do that on the agency side and on the podcast guest list side. So, you know. Um, onboarding, that would be for our agency side. Now, we have our other product. It's called the Podcast Guest List, which is um, a bit like a, a SaaS dashboard, where essentially clients come to us, we build their media kit, we upload them to this quote-unquote list, which would look a lot like probably you know social media platforms that people are used to. Um, we've got about 1,000-plus podcast hosts that subscribe to this list. So you sign up, you fill out a profile, about a thousand different podcasts and growing every day. Use this list as a resource to book guests. Typically for the podcast guest list, the, the, the characteristics, they're often coaches. A lot of times they're um, consultants. A lot of times they're agency owners. What we're looking for there are people that have a strong message to share. You know, and you, we find that with coaches a lot, you know, people that have gone into professional world, corporate world, jobs, and just found it stifling and, and, you know, probably destructive. And so, you know, they ventured off into their own practice, created their own little niche, and they want to share, you know, and try and help people. So that's a, it's a great place for us to kind of look for, for talent for that guest list, people that have a strong message and want to help. Um, and then, you know, kind of the podcast hosts that we work with often find those stories compelling and they can have those conversations that they're looking for. How long does it typically take to be booked on a podcast after people apply? You know, the, with the podcast guest list, we'll probably, you'd probably book two or three within the first two weeks. It's kind of a pace that we're trying to put on there. Um, with the agency side, you know, onboarding's a little bit slower. So you're probably booked on a podcast when, within the first month, at least, from onboarding on the agency side. So this is a big one for you, Ryan. What makes Kitcaster stand out from other booking agencies? Yep. I like that question. Um, I, I think first and foremost, um, I set out to do this to be the best in the world. And really, that's kind of the attitude I, I take with uh, anything I'm, I'm going to do, because otherwise, what's the point? You know, I don't want to be second best or anything else. Um, when, I, when I really started with the pilot program, I took a look around um, at what would, might be competitors. I was happy that I found some because that meant <laughs> somebody made it work. But I felt like I could be the best. And that's no disrespect to, the, to our competitors out there. I feel like we definitely all have our own different lane. But as far as, you know, kind of our sweet spot, which is, uh, successful entrepreneurs, funded startup founders, C-suite level executives, people with a mission to tell. I think our commitment to being the best in the world makes us do all the little extras. You know, some of those are kind of sentimental and corny. If it's like sending thank you cards, you know, 
exhibiting unconditional positive regard, um, sending gifts, sending flowers to clients sometimes. You know, I mean, the, a lot of what we do is to ensure a feeling of positivity about it, you know. Um, there's going to be innate stress and pressure around booking podcasts. Um, oftentimes it's, why would you put, book me on that podcast? And I've got other stuff to do. Can you reschedule my podcast? <laughs> so, you know, so managing these two um, kind of central problems that will be innate in our business all the time with um, kindness and uh, respect, I think, is ultimately what separates us and what allows us to execute at a very, very high level, uh, move really quickly, and, and frankly, just kind of enjoy our company <laughs> and our days together. So um, I think that's why we're number one. We have room to grow, but I think at this point, um, if you're looking at podcast booking agencies, Kitcaster is the best in the world. Well, I agree. You know, if, if you're going to get into something, go at it like you want to be the best, and it will take care of itself. So yeah. talk to us about how much time and confusion coming on board with you will save people. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's the other thing is that we're not reinventing the wheel. You know, if you wanted to go book your own podcast, you most certainly can. I think, Ed, you stand out as a podcaster because your communication is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Most you, podcasters friend. are not necessarily communication professionals, so it could be challenging, you know, um, but like any challenge, it just takes time. So, you know, if you're like, you want to, you're committed to podcasting, you want to leverage in your business, you want to give it a shot, do it, you could always do it yourself, but if you, if you need someone to save you that time, give you a little bit of expertise into the right direction, and hopefully help you, you leverage a return from it, then that's probably a good place to go find a podcast agent. Being organized in podcasting really takes time, and this can really save people a lot of headache. So tell us, how has coronavirus actually affected you and your business? You bet. So um, my uh, digital marketing agency, which was also called Talk Launch, the name of my podcast. My wife and I have run that together for 10 years. Uh, we're heavily leveraged in food and beverage and uh, hospitality. So, you know, I, probably about a week ago today, even, <laughs> we lost our entire book of business. We were fired from, I think, 17 different clients, all with heavy hearts. And they had to let us go because they were letting their whole staff go, you know, as kind of quarantine set in. So, you know, that affected me pretty dramatically. Now, uh, serendipitously, you know, in September of 2019, when we launched Kitcaster, uh, my wife had been kind of running our agency for some time, and I had been validating these different products. Um, Kitcaster has taken off, and so uh, kind of I had eyeballed, you know, February of 2020 as my full exit out of um, the agency and full-time into Kitcaster. So... I was already planning kind of massive effort into Kitcaster or, you know, just full-time effort, March of, of 2020. So, you know, when we lost 17 clients, that put a little extra urgency, a little extra fire <laughs> into Kitcaster um, because we didn't know, you know, we didn't know, hey, is podcasting going to die? I kind of had this hunch. I was like, you know, well, everyone's going home and, People are going to have a need to connect. Um, business leaders are going to have a need to to lead their teams, and podcasting is a great way to do that. So that became kind of a part of our sales pitch, and you know we ended up finding a lot of folks that saw that as a great avenue. You know, so double-edged sword. You know, one side of that sword, my ten-year-old business that I had poured so much blood, sweat, and tears was killed overnight. And then the, on the other side, Kitcaster, something I'm so passionate about and so excited about, you know, jumped on a rocket ship. So um, kind of interesting there, I guess. Yeah, well, my prediction is a lot of those people experienced what it was like to move towards podcasting or online experiences. So my prediction is you're going to start doing very well coming out of COVID. 
Mm. So, yeah. I agree. So who is your ideal client or kit caster? You know, kit caster, I believe podcasting is for everybody. Um, I think people should go on podcasts. I think people should have podcasts. I think it's good for uh, humanity. I think it also is kind of a healing presence in our culture that has been maybe tarnished a bit by these online communications. You know, you just you, – you look in the, the Facebook comments and you, you just wonder about the future of humanity. <laughs> yes. It's kind of, kind of bad. Um, whereas podcasting is the exact opposite. You know, you see people working hard to reach – towards each other you know so i think it's important um that being said we only have so much uh effort if we're going to go out there and look for clients so agency side we like to work with funded startup founders um ceos of uh large companies and successful entrepreneurs people that have multiple exits from companies and they're they have maybe a new project they want to get out there and talk about it um those those are great uh, clients for us. For the podcast guest list side, we love working with coaches. We love working with uh, consultants, and we love working with agency owners. We also love working with podcast hosts there, where podcast hosts can build a profile and go on other people's shows. Um, because strangely enough, uh, podcast hosts make great podcast guests. So those are kind of the, the personas. If we're going to go out there courting people, those are some of the kind of um, attributes of, of people we're looking for. Um, that being said, it just runs the gambit. If you want to be on podcasts, we're a good place for you. You know, we've worked with authors, poets, science fiction writers, um, filmmakers, police officers, uh, jewelers, natural products developers. I mean, pretty much everybody. Yeah, I can guarantee you you will love the personal touch that KitCaster puts on each and every person they deal with. So what would be your call to action for anybody out there trying to leverage podcasts? You bet. You know, I tell you what, if anybody ever if wants to talk to me, I'm happy to put my email out there. You know, you can find me at estes at kitcaster.com. Um, if you have questions about anything podcast related, I'm happy to answer it. You know, Kitcaster only does booking podcasts, but you know, if you want to know a good he pair of headphones to buy, I've got a resource for you. If you want to build your own podcast, um, I know folks you can talk to. So um, I like helping people, and I like people uh, helping people get introduced into this this world of, of podcasting. So um, Estes at Kitcaster.com is a good place to find me. Okay, well, that was my next question. How can people find you and get started using KitCaster? So, KitCaster.com, and you said your email was Ryan at KitCaster? That binds me, too. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this one, unless you want to add anything to this, Ryan. I really appreciate coming on and talking about KitCaster a little bit, Ed. I'm glad it's um, been helpful for you and I, I just really enjoy your podcast and wish you the best of luck my friend well I do thank you for what you do and I especially thank you for being with us today here on the Dead America podcast my pleasure thank you for listening in to the podcast episode today if you enjoyed it please share it with a friend also, please follow us on any of your podcast players. Or if you'd like to get a little more personal with us and really identify what we truly are about and get involved with what we are doing, make sure you go over to the Google Play Store and download our new app. We can't wait to get involved with you. And that's going to finish up this episode of the Dead America podcast. Make sure you come back next week and follow along for another great interview. I'm Ed Waters, out.